Hey everyone, I'm just running around a little tutorial world that I um, made by following a YouTube tutorial. I will drop a link to it in the description. But why, you may ask, does it look so terrible? <laughs> well, that's because my camera isn't behind the character. It's actually up there, looking at that giant black square, which is a screen of giant pixels made with PCG and a material using world position offset. You can see here that, uh, yeah, that's what I was looking at. And if we get close, we see a bunch of little pixel cylinders. And they are rotating on and off, depending on how intense the color is for each pixel. Uh, this is the actual scene. All right, so let me show you how I did this. All right, I've got here the pixel cylinder from my previous tutorial, and if you haven't already followed that one, you should follow the tutorial just to create this pixel. What I'm going to do first is update the material. I'm going to call it M Dynamic Pixels and open it up. And for this, I will create a new base color and emissive color. And just hook those up. And I'm going to convert them to parameters. Base color. This one, emissive color. Great. And now I'm just going to create two float scalers and drop them into metallic and roughness. The roughness one I'm going to convert to one. There we go. And now I'm going to go back and create two material instances. MI underscore dynamic pixels white, duplicate that one, and black. The black one I can just leave, the white one I'm going to open up and update the base color and emissive color. Base color I'll set to fully white, emissive color I'll set to 0.25, 25% white. And now I can go ahead and assign these textures. I'm going to use the white one for element zero, which is on the bottom and black one will be on top. And back in this. Now I'm going to update the world position offset. And this is going to be what rotates our pixels. So first I'll use a rotate about axis node and just hook that up into world position offset. And here we're going to get an error on the material until we've filled in all four of these values. So for position, I'll use absolute, well, just world position. And the name of that node is absolute world position. And I will use an object pivot point node and set it to the mesh particle pivot location. And I'm making some of these decisions because I want to get the individual instance static mesh and not the entire PCG volume. All right, and now I need to set the rotation axis. And for that, I'm going to set it to the Y axis. So I'll create a vector 3 and make it 0, 1, 0, 1 for the Y axis. And I'm going to plug that into transform. And go from instance and particle space to world space and hook that into the normalized rotation axis. OK, and now we need the rotation angle. So this is going to be a value between 0 and 1. For now, let's just drop in 0.25, just to make sure it works. Say that, and there we go. The object's rotated onto its side. OK, now until we get everything else created, there's not too much more to be done here. So let's go ahead and make the Render target. New texture render target, RT underscore dynamic pixels. And there we go. Now I will create a blueprint and get our camera that's going to be setting this render target, BP underscore dynamic camera. Open that up. And I'm just going to add a scene capture component 2D. And for this thing, I'm going to have it, if I scroll down, writing to this RT dynamic pixels. And I'm also going to change the 
primitive render mode, I assume going for primitives as opposed to legacy is going to be better. I don't know that for sure. But this, the capture source, is something that I do want to change. So if you leave it at scene color, HDR, and RGB, it's going to be pretty dark for our purposes. I find that final color LDR in RGB is a little brighter, which is nice. So I'm just going to change it to that. Compile, save, and now we can drop it into the world. And if we go back to our render target, we see something. It looks like it's clipping with the landscape, so let's maybe move it up some. Yeah, that's going to be a nice view. Let's see what we got. There we go. That is our render target. Now let's create the blueprint for the PCG as well as the PCG. BP underscore dynamic pixels. Let's make that lowercase. There we go. And a new PCG. PCG underscore dynamic pixels. And I can open up the blueprint. And for this, I'm just going to add a PCG and select dynamic pixels. And now I'm going to add two variables to it. One is going to be pixels per axis. And this one can be an integer. And the other one is going to be pixel size. And this one will need to be a float. And I'm just going to expose both of them, make them public. And lastly, I'm going to edit the construction script. And for this, I'm going to use a resize render target 2D. And I'll just connect it to the construction script and select RT and square dynamic pixels. And now I'm going to hook up pixels per axis to both the width and the height. This will let us dynamically resize the render target so that we're not setting more pixels than necessary. It'll just make it a little more efficient. All right, we're done with that. Let's go into, uh, close all these off. And let's drop the blueprint into the world. All right, so now under the PCG, I'm going to use a create points grid. And let's just uncheck cool points outside volume and debug. And now don't really see any points. And that's because the points are at 0, 0, 0. So let me uh, fix that. I'm going to get actor data self mode will be get single point and now I'll copy points. The target will be the actor data and the source will be the point grid. And let me just set the scale to absolute 0.5 to make it pretty easy to see debug. And there we go. We've got our points and they rotate with the actor. Perfect. All right, so now on the points grid, let's set some of these values dynamically. So get actor property. This one is going to be setting the grid extents. So I'm going to get pixels per axis and drop that into the output name. And the other one, I'm going to pull in pixel size and drop that in. So pixel size, I'm going to be able to drop pretty straightforwardly into cell size. So let's make a vector attribute and I'll change it to a vector. And I'm going to drop pixel size into X, Y, and Z. And then I'm going to leave the output target as none because the input required on the create points grid is cell space size, but you can't actually output cell space size. You're going to get an error. This is fixed in 5.3 from what I can tell, but for now you can just output none and it will be accepted. It should be accepted. It is for me. Okay, so for the grid extents, let's set this slightly differently. I'm going to take the pixels per axis and the pixel size and multiply them together to get the unit size of the grid extents. 
And then I'm going to have to divide that by 2 because grid extents, uh, if you want your grid to be 1,000 by 1,000, you would set the grid extents to 500. So I'll, I'll just divide this number by 2, and that will give me my number. So a maths op, multiply, and I'll multiply pixels per axis by pixel size, and output target can be total size. And now I will create an attribute. I'm just going to call it the number 2 and the value 2. And now I'll do a divide, mass off again, change it to divide, and I'll divide total size by 2. And the output target for that, I'll just call it extents. And now I can make a vector. Extents for input source 1 and 2 and 3, and I'll change it to a vector and connect all these points. And now the output target is going to be grid extents. This one does not need a space, so I'll just hook that up. And now if we save, and nothing is here because we haven't set any of these values, so let's set pixels per axis to, let's say, 100, and pixel size to 120, and there we go. And if we change the pixels per axis to 50, we see it's resized. If we change the pixel size to 50, we see it's resized. 200, spaced out even more. Great. So I'll just leave it here. And now let me duplicate up the points to create the red, green, and blue. So after the copy points, I'm going to use a transform points. And I'll just use two more of these. The first one is going to be offset by negative 40, negative 40, because that'll be red. It'll be on the left. Green will be 0, 0, and blue will be 40, 40 on the right. And now I can do a static mesh spawner. And I will spawn sm underscore pixel. And now for my override materials, I'm going to add two of them. One will be dynamic pixels white, and the other one will be dynamic pixels black. And while we're here, let's change the collision preset to no collision. And when working in 5.2, I like to uncheck Affect Dynamic Indirect Lighting and Distance Field Lighting, because Lumen lags when I get into the millions of objects spawned. This appears to be fixed in 5.3, so you don't have to worry about that there. And if I save this, and just duplicate up this static mesh spawner twice, and I'll hook them all up. And we should see a nice grid of pixels. There will be a little gap in them since, now let me turn off debug. Little gap in them since I've set the width to 200, but there we go. Okay, so let's uh, make these pixels rotate. First off, I'm going to assign them each a color. For that, I'm going to go into this get actor data here and use three add attributes. First one will be red. And I'll just leave it as a double. Next one will be green. And the last one will be blue. And this will workflow will get a little easier in 5.3 because you can do a little more stuff with vectors there. I'm going to leave all of these as 0, because the default value for each of these will be 0. And then I'm going to set red to 1 for the red line, green to 1 for the green line, and blue to 1 for the blue line. And then I'm going to pass all of those values into the material. So since I've already created these attributes, all I'm going to do is create an attribute of 1 and call it 1 and use a maths op to add 
1 to red, green, and blue. All right, and now you're seeing the error that attribute property red does not exist for input zero. So if you go to the copy points node and change it to target first, that should resolve the error for now. So in the static mesh spawner, let's go ahead and change the instance packer type to instance PCG instance packer by attribute. And now I'm going to add three attributes, red, green, and blue. And now I can just go ahead and delete these spawners and copy and paste this. And back in the pixels, everything still works. Let's go into the material again. Now I can get a per instance custom data to pull in these attributes. And the data index 0 is going to match the data index of each of these instance packer attributes. So 0 is red, 1 is green, 2 is blue. So I'll have red, green, and blue. And why don't I make a little note? And now I can append a 3 vector to make this into a color. And if I multiply this color by the base color, I'll get the uh, proper color that I want. And I can do that with the emissive color as well. And we still can't rotate it yet. We need to get in the texture data. And while we do have the render target, we don't, ha we don't know which pixel should be sampling from which point on the render target quite yet. But let's see what we've got here now. There we go. We've got red, red, and blue. Hmm. Ah. There we go. Let's try that again. Red, green, and blue. <laughs> Okay, so we've got our pixels, they're R, G, and B, which is perfect. So now we need to add the rotational data to them. So for that, I'm going to basically create a UV, a very simple UV, by calculating the pixel's exact position relative to the entire grid. So I want these pixels to go from 0 all the way up to 1, for their UV. So this lower left corner would be 0, 0, top right corner is 1, 1. And I already know how big it is. Uh, it's this value, the total size. So all I have to do is divide the pixel's position by this total size, and that will get me pretty close. So a math stop here, divide, position dot xy by total size, and I'll output it to a new value called n pause. And if I check this out here, n pause is going from negative 0.49 all the way up to positive 0.49. So if I add 0.5 to this, I get my value of 0 to 1. Add, I'll take n pause and add a value that I'm going to create called point five and output n pause. Create attribute point five and the value will be 0 0.5 and drop that in. And if I inspect this one, I now have my n pause from 0 0.01 to 0 0.99. Now it's in 5.2 kind of hard to work with vectors, so I want to convert these over to 
floats or doubles or whatever they are. So for that, I'm just going to use two break vectors. You could do this with an attribute copy or some other stuff, but I just have found break vector makes a little more sense to me. So I'm going to first break n pause and output it to x pause. And what this is going to do is n pause is on coming in on the in, and then it's going to output and pause.x to x pause on the x line. It'll output and pause.y to x pause on the y line, so I don't want to use the y line, and then z and w are unused. So n pause still exists after I've broken this vector attribute. And so if I go into this one and I break n pause and output it to y pause, I've got my x pause and y pause. So now I should be able to drop these into the copy points and let's see if we've retained these values. n pause x and y pause. So interestingly, now I can change the attribute inheritance to source first and it's it's working just fine. I'm not sure why it wasn't working earlier. Maybe it's because there were no attributes being passed through from the source, so the target had trouble. But uh, yeah, you'll want attribute inheritance to be source first so that all of your values come through. OK, and now I can add a couple more values to this, x pause and y pause. And let's delete these again. And you know, I could probably just use a single static mesh spawner. Well, that, that seems like it'll work. OK, so I'll just use a single spawner. Perfect. Now I can do something with these new per instance custom data. This one will be x, and this one will be y. OK, so this one, if I look back at my static mesh spawner, uh, x pause is 3 and y pause is 4. So data index 3 for this one and data index 4 for this one. And now I can append these to create a vector 2. Just append vector. And now I can texture sample. And all I have to do here is select my texture, rt underscore dynamic pixels. And I've plugged in the UV, so each uh, each one of these pixels is going to be sampling from an individual pixel of the, the texture right here. And now what I can do is take the R, G, and B data and multiply it by this data to subtract the non subtract the channels I'm not using because only one of these is going to be set to one. So if I multiply one red by this texture and green and blue by zero, I'm going to only extract the red from this texture. So multiply. And I've multiplied these together. Now, because only one of these is 1, I can add all these up to get a value of 1. And 1 is a full 360 degree rotation here. So I can add components. And I'll plug this into the F3 V3 slot. And now all I have to do is divide this result by 2. And I will rotate between 0 to 0.5, which will be fully off to fully on. And then it won't rotate the rest of the way. And that should give me my rotation angle. Save this. Go back to the world. And what do we have? Can't really tell. Let's uh, shrink this down a little bit. So pixels per axis 50. Let's make it 200. And pixel size 120. It might take a little time to calculate. And there we go. We have a working camera. 
And uh, it can even pick up the screen itself, which is kind of fun. OK, so uh, there's that. If you want to go something more straightforward, you could change this uh, thing right here to output this value instead of to the position offset straight into the base color and the emissive color. And if we save that, well, it's now on the back side of the screen. And there you are, slightly more practical maybe than rotating pixels on and off. But, you know, once you start looking at practical ways to do things, it's a slippery slope. And, you know, why would you want to do something efficiently, right? All right, enjoy.